And here we are talking about the expanse on my channel. Surprise. Um, <laughs> how you doing, Amber? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Oh, awesome. Yes. Uh, so hi, I'm John. Uh, I run our Express Press, where we play the expanse role playing game. Uh, we're back in September with new episodes, so uh, you can always go check that out however you want to. Um, I am joined by my friend and fellow Screaming Firehawk and diehard Expanse fan and cosplayer, one Amber. Hi, uh, everybody. And and you got to you 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 have a you have a new new cosplay. I do actually. Uh, I made the jacket for drummer. The drum war during the um, event inside of the Green Gate. The whole Abaddon's Gate sequence? Yes, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Um, I That was kind of like, for me, uh, in the show, that was probably like my favorite mm. character point for Drummer. Yeah, and, was, she went through a lot in that one. That was a... Mm -hmm. And just the whole like not giving up thing, which, you know, kind of leads into what we're going to be talking about today, so... This is true. This is very true. Yeah, episode three was a doozy. Uh, we got we got a lot of words. We have a lot, we have a lot of comments. Uh, and uh, you're you're in, um, I believe. Uh, you're owed some congratulatory uh, congr some congratulations for guessing everything. Um, yeah, I was like, does it feel good to be right? Uh, <laughs> okay. So the petty person in me says absolutely yes. Like of course I'm always right, but the 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 other person means like I'm like I I've gotten so good at predicting mm. things, and so I'm like it's in, in most instances it's like a a bad I told you so. Uh, okay. But okay. this one is kind of in somewhere in the middle of a in between. Uh, yeah, uh, we got some people in the in the, uh, the chat here. Uh, Klein Grump. I don't know. Uh, I'm guessing they came over from Ty and that guy's Discord, uh, but they know you from. I think they know you from that site, and they said they're surprised you put on costume and makeup. Oh, that's what we've been doing. That's, that's what, we've what been we doing. talked about from episode yeah. one. So yeah, this is. Yeah. Um, I got this shirt. Uh, it turns out Tyco will give you a free T-shirt after you spin up your third station. Oh. Yeah. So you okay, three stations, cool. you get a free T-shirt. It's not a bad deal, right? Uh, punch card. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got, a, I got a spin station punch card. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good time. No, um, but uh, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. No, but thank you for coming by. Um, and so we're talking about the game. Uh, we're talking about episode three specifically, first ones, which is a hell of a title. Um, was there anything you want to say about like this episode before you went into it, or kind of thoughts on it? I, I was, I was really eager for this one too because like. Episode two ended on kind of like the creepy, a really creepy shot of the station. Yeah, it did. Yeah, that was and a good shot. I, think yeah. I, I, I like the, my favorite thing about the transition between episodes two and three is you kind of like, kind of lean more into the horror aspect of the storytelling. Yeah, uh, I, I think that was a big element too. And, and that's, I, I completely agree with that. Uh, it was kind of ominous. I could tell this episode was going to be horror oriented. The title's first ones was really ominous, um, and I that's actually kind of a thing I've always liked about the Expanse. I think people forget about the Expanse is that it begins as a horror story. The first scene in the show is a horror is a horror scene. The first scene in the book, the prologue, is a horror scene, um, and I and I this this episode did a pretty good job with it. And and I always compare I compare the Expanse game a lot. Uh, in, in that realm to like dead space if you haven't played, but like um, it kind of had a feel of dead space uh, in terms of the kind of the abandoned stations. You're not really sure where everyone is. Like no, everybody shouldn't just like, uh, everyone should be there, but you're like, why is no one here? It doesn't make any sense. The thing works, what's going on? Um, and so I dug that a lot. And then, uh, yeah, it says, uh, uh, this says it's Fred from uh, Ty and that guy. Oh, hi Fred. Okay, oh, there you go. We get shout <laughs> no, we appreciate it. No, we, 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 we take care of our communities out there, guys, and we always like to acknowledge those that come to check us out, so we appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. The other, the other theme that I liked about this episode was that it was like, what is this? Okay, I'm gonna like Google this later, look it up later. Oh. And so I was able to do like some really interesting deep dives onto some of the things that we saw in episode three. And like, and I'm like, hmm, that sort of like, thinking about that and like how those kind of like come together and help tell the story. That was really fascinating for me too. And it was, it was also cool. The, the other thing about this episode that was, 
I, and, and once again, guys, we're going to do spoilers. We're going to be spoilers for the episode here. We're, we're open talking about it. It's been a week since it's been out. Um, was that you got to see, like, Drummer and Maya working together, like, pretty close quarters, actually. It wasn't like they were off distancy from each other. Like, like the first episode, they're, they're distanced from each other, kind of. But this one, they're both kind of in those tight quarters. And the station you find out is, like, it's an old mining station. And it's been abandoned. Like, certain parts of it have been shut down. Like, shut down piece by piece by piece. And you you kind of find out that the station is occupied by, like, the first generation belters, basically. Is what yeah. it really is. And they're, the thing about that was, I, it was weird because, like, the people that went there weren't belters. But the, the, peop, the children that were born there were belters. And that's where the real issue comes about. Um, and it, it's kind of an interesting perspective. It kind of gives you kind of an idea of where the real, um, the real like tension of, of the Belters comes about, why it comes about, and how they're like, these people kind of, what it seemed like, what, what the story seems like was that these people came out there, and as you find as you go through the station, they came out there to mine, they have their colony, stuff's going okay, but then there's this tuberculosis outbreak on the station. And long story short, the tuberculosis mutated because of their um, antibiotics in their uh, in their filters. I just like, but I was like, why would you like? I under I on one hand, I understand why yeah. they put antibiotics in the filters, but on the other hand, it's like we know antibiotic overuse yeah. now is problematic. And so I'm just like, yeah. what happened in the next 300 years? Why that disorder? Yeah, my, my thought is, well, and that actually, uh, and then what happens is basically the children get exposed and because the children have under uh, developed immune systems due to being the belters and live in low gravity, which is a big issue, they just incubate the hell out of it. And like, it gets really aggressive and it just outbreaks the whole station. And so that's why the, that's why the station starts going downhill. And so they, they like ask the UN for help and the UN like doesn't really respond. But at the same time, you find out the station was kind of like a, it wasn't, it wasn't illegal, but it wasn't authorized. They didn't go through the proper channels. I think they just kind of, they just kind of grabbed it and showed up and started building the thing. Yeah. And, and I think that's kind of like the issue too, is that like, there's, there's this kind of double-edged sword that people kind of went off the, went off the handle, just grabbing stuff when they could and then didn't um, really think about like, well, do I need back support? You know, what are, the, what are the, the previous things going on here and stuff? And so the station basically dies out. Like they, um, they start dying out and they have to kind of shut the station down piece by piece by piece. But then you find out that they, uh, they the things aren't, they, they, they have a way of uh, spinning the, the circumstances. So things don't seem as bad, I guess, would be a way of putting it. Do you want to, do you want to detail that Amber? Like what their, what their little, no. uh, so I, I don't like my thought was when we started seeing the creepy symbols, like the, the, uh, the triangle thing, yeah. I didn't look it up. It's called a Penrose triangle. Yes. The optical and, illusion. Yeah. Classic optical illusion. And I was just like, the first thing I wrote down was this looks like it's a cult. And, oh. and so I don't think it started out that no. way, but I think as people started, the, just their children started dying. Um, I think that the the cult, if you will, kind of um, blossomed out of that grieving process with all of the adults yeah. on the, the on the station. I, I drummer and Maya talk about that, and drummer says something like, "You know, this is just the way they're trying to deal with their guilt." And I think that the doctor on the station, he wasn't into it, but he was like, "If they're grieving this way, I probably should let them grieve this way." And yeah. so their cult kind of built around that, like they preserve the bodies; they don't. They don't recycle the bodies. And that's actually like mind blowing the drummer in this. She's like, I, I think one of my favorite lines in it was like, they didn't recycle the bodies. I already have my recycler picked out. <laughs> oh, I thought that was hysterical. <laughs> that was hilarious. Like, if, you know, like, if that's like, you know, part of the end of life yeah. um, preparations. You always like go to the graveyard and pick out the. Yeah, we picked out. We, my family, we, like, I had family members pick out urns and stuff, you know, I mean, so it's like. Yeah, they're all ready for it, but yeah, that was that was a kind of a fun little little tidbit I dug. But like the <laughs> but the the cult goes to such a degree that they even get rid of their recyclers, they break them down, and they develop this um these coffins that'll basically like preserve the body forever. Like bodies yeah. preserve really well in like vacuum. Like you're you don't have, you know, it's like you're vacuum sealed, but you're actually not sealed, you're just in vacuum. And they they go a step further than that and like make sure it's all like no static electricity, I mean, nothing on it. 
Yeah, I thought that was really fascinating when they, you know, they have like little windows yeah, in the little, coffin. Yeah. And I also found it fascinating that they, 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 the people were wrapped up in shrouds. Yeah, and, and I saw that first before, like, that was like one of the first things we see. Mm -hmm. And so I was going like, that. there must be something significant about this. Yeah. And I really do think that based on some of the symbols and stuff we saw, um, probably like, kind of connecting back to like Greek mythology, especially with it being called the Cassiopeian Collective. Yeah, the Cassiopeian Collective. Yeah, because Cassiopeia uh, is like a, it, like, it's like vanity. And what it has to yeah, do with? So, so she, if you've seen Clash of the Titans, um, she's the mother of the um, woman that Perseus, uh, she's mother Andromeda. Andromeda. Mother. Yeah, she's the mother yeah. of Andromeda. And, you know, she was, uh, I, my, I wrote a note here that said, caught the wrath of Poseidon due to her vanity. Urkel told her and her husband to chain daughter to rock. Daughter was saved by Perseus from the sea monster Cetus. And so uh, that's where that's at. And I kind of like the thing that I wonder is, do they name themselves the Cassiopeian Collective after the children started dying? They just sort of like dug their heels in, didn't like go back to Earth and say, this is a failed experiment. Let's get back to Earth. The UN aren't sending help. Let's just kind of fail thing. Or they just double, triple down on that. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was an interesting name um, they picked. Uh, and I agree that I can also see the whole thing about like turning the children to stone, like trying to preserve them, that kind of thing. You could go that route. There, there's a bunch of routes to go with that. But yeah, it, it is fascinating. And then, um, but the reason why Drummer and the Mall are there is because this is supposedly where the MK core is gone. Yeah. And they're they're the they're they've, it's supposed to be further. They want to explore the whole station. The station's partially shut down, so they have to go through piece by piece and turn it back on. And you, you find some of the, you kind of find the the classrooms of the children, and it, it's a death oh. cult. Like it, it's a little. Um, uh, I I posted so when I saw when I started playing it, and I started kind of picking up what the cult was about initially. I went on Twitter immediately, and I posted a link to um, the uh, uh, they they I put I put a link up to the song by um, Drab Magic called Thirty Nine by Design, which is about like Heaven's Gate. And like kind mm -hmm. of suicide cults, they're they're about aliens because it isn't just like they're preserving the bodies; they're preserving the bodies for a reason, and that is that they believe that because technology, human technology, will advance so much, or because there's potentially aliens out there that are very advanced, that they'll be able to like resurrect everybody and save them if they preserve yeah. the bodies. So they're like they're playing this like kind of afterlife in in the real world situation. Um, uh, and it, it was kind of an interesting game. Yeah. Um, so, I, yeah, uh, let me see real quick here. You're asking how to pronounce, uh, how we pronounce the name. I am not sure how to pronounce the name off, off the hand. I will hit a button real quick and have it pronounced for me. You, you guys will hear it at home here. Let me see. Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia. Okay, Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia. See, okay. I, I would say it the other way because I had a friend use that name and actually an Expanse game for their character a while back. So, like, that and, I, and the way she pronounced it was how I was pronouncing it. Um, so uh yeah but go for it the um but yeah it was that was that was kind of an interesting thing and then uh i mentioned to you through discord i think my twitter too i was like have you read last flight of the cassandra yet oh i i must have missed that and i did and i as soon as i started i i read it that uh that night after first uh video call yeah and i i was just like as i was going through i was like are these two things linked? Yeah. Like, are so, these two movements linked? But so for those who don't know, Last Flight of the Cassandra was the exclusive short story written by the Corys for the Expanse role-playing game. And it had, it doesn't cross over with any of the characters in the books. It doesn't cross over. Like, James Holden mentioned it just in the sense of, like, this guy's like, who's this asshole on TV? You know, <laughs> like, is basically it. Like, why? I'm tired of hearing about James Holden. That's all he really says about it. And it's actually, it's a, it's, it's a unique story because it's like the only real story that deals with humans going towards Venus. And this is before like the impact and everything. Um, and it, it kind of looks into like these guys that are trying to like, what are called sun divers. They're looking for old resources towards Venus when there was like, a failed colonization of Venus. Um, and in it, they basically stumble upon this asteroid that has like a base on it that has like an installation. 
and they go into the installation and it's like nothing. It's like in good shape, it's preserved. There's no air, but there's no one really there until they find this one room. Uh, is it six bodies? Is it seven bodies? It was, I think it was 12 bodies, 12 bodies. Like, sitting in a circle. In, in, in like, vac suits. Was, yeah. In vac suits, all in a, in, a, in a semi-circle. And they're all facing like one other person, aren't they? I or think they it, might have been the facing like, it was like a, 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 for lack of a better term, it, if I recall correctly, it was like an altar with multiple symbols on it. Yeah, and like the, and they think some of the symbols are like early Martian symbols too, like like the the symbol for like Mars and like astrology. Things yeah, I described it, once. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, my take after I read that, and I didn't go into a deep dive with that one, but I was like, I want, I was like, it did some kind of like based on some kind of uh, death cult around the war god Ares or Mars. Yeah. You know, if you're like the Greek or Roman and um, I really couldn't find anything that indicated that there were like death cults. Yeah, so for the, the god of war. What's interesting about that story is uh, I actually asked Ty about it once and Ty was mm -hmm. like, I was like, I was like, hey, I gotta know what the fuck is this about? Because <laughs> like, this is the creepiest <laughs> shit. Like, cause you know, all they do is see this stuff and they're like, yeah, we're out. Like, and I think there's a canister, and they I think they take the canister, but it's never told what's in the canister. I think it's on the part of the altar, isn't it? There's like a single device or I something. They, I could I guess there's a canister, but like, anyways, it's unclear what any of it is. It's been here for a long, long time, 100 years at least, but they just kind of bugger off. They just kind of leave. They're like, this is too weird later. And it's kind of about regret and such. And he, was, I asked him what it was about. He was like, you know, he, he gave the answer, you don't get a no. Like, uh -huh, he did he did that that kind of thing and he was like but he was like it's a speculative adventure that you could use for their role playing game that's what they were going for they wanted something just kind of weird that would be kind of a fun circumstances to think about what players would do and i was like okay that's fair um but it's a good story it's a, it's an interesting story uh yeah and it's it's a weird it's a very um i'd say of all the expanse like formally written pieces it's probably the most intimate because it's very short in, in its time span and it's very much about like pretty much someone's day, like in space. Yeah. And it's freaking weird. But um, yeah, that 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 reminded me, as soon as I was playing this, I was like, holy shit, this reminds me of Last Father Cassandra. Uh, and uh, what's interesting about that, and, I, and I'll get off the RPG topic because I know I talk about it too much, but the Soul System source book's coming out soon and it will explain what that cult is. <gasps> So they're actually going to talk about all the different, and they're going to talk about even some of the religions that were only mentioned in Abaddon's Gate. There's like that humanist religion. There's like a mm -hmm. lot of new, there's like a few new religions they mentioned by name, like certain people are on board, but they don't explain what they were. Um, yeah. And so I'm really eager to hear more about the religions of the soul system. And that's what I'm supposed to hear about. I'm like, okay, let's, let's get weird, guys. Let's get weird. Space death cult. I'm for it, baby. Like, I, I will <laughs> give you my pulse. Like, um... And, and, yeah, to be fair, I mean, the book starts off very Lovecrafty. And if you're going to do Lovecrafty and horror, you got to have cults, guys. you just got to have cults. Sooner or later, a cult has to show up. Is so. it even a Lovecrafty story if there's not a cult? Exactly. Someone's got someone's got to spawn a cult. But, I mean, maybe maybe the cults are so good, they're, they're that secret, so who knows? Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, it's... it's. Uh, but the game dealt with a cult in this one, I, and I dug that they delved into that. You got people getting kind of weird, like, freaking out in space. Um, I would, mm -hmm. I would also... If I was also going to be more comical about my take on space cults, I would or this this section of the game, I would also reference uh, Ren and Stimpy episode Space Madness, because um, okay. <laughs> I feel like people kind of went bonkers in space after stuff went awry. Yeah. But um, so let's talk about drummer though in the game uh, as opposed to just the setting, because it's it's a it's a I will say this, it is one of, it it actually has some of the most beautiful shots in this game so far. Yeah. Um, the one shot where they, you're looking down, that was wild. Oh, my goodness. I feel like they did some, like, I mean, geometry, apparently, I feel like was very, very significant for these, the this, uh, collective. Um, especially, like, I wrote, it says here, the Penrose Triangle said, mathematician mm. Sir Roger Penrose called it an impossibility in its purest form. Interesting. And, um, and there was one, is, is there was uh, this, I think only appeared once. It was in the classroom. Okay. And it was like the the Penrose Triangle with like the circle in a weavy. Oh, and I wrote okay. Here, it says if a line is traced around the Penrose Triangle like through a circle, a four loop Mobius strip is formed. Interesting. So that has to again like that the geometry, the beauty of it. Well, and, also the you know, we definitely see that when yeah, and we see that when they went into like the pods. Like, 
the pod. Well, because they, they're going for the infinite, they want to they want to go into an infinite future, and that's their premise. Is like if we can, if our bodies can last infinitely, we will eventually be resurrected inevitably. Heck of a thing. Now, what was interesting though, and let's, let's go back to your predictions and our our predictions earlier when we talked about episode one was um so so you initially thought that like the mk core is going to be the mal Kwiatkowski core which is going to be proto molecule yeah and uh we'll come back to that but i was like well i feel like that's i was like i felt like that was a jump i was like oh, that seems like so they're, they're gonna go that route that's so much to go i feel like that's such an extreme step maybe they'll talk about just like the pods like the the stealth pods they use for the the project caliban stuff right yeah. And so that was kind of my, when I was playing it, that's what I thought, and that's what I genuinely thought I was going to stop at, was that, oh, these guys develop these preservation pods that will last forever in space. Well, you know, Mal Quick, Protogen, gets a hold of, like, knows of these guys having this, goes and finds them, and uses them as the basis of their tech for Project Caliban to launch. But that doesn't expose the protomolecule. That doesn't expose the aliens. It just says, hey, these guys are working on, like, weird firing caskets into space. Cool. It's not it's not this huge epic thing. But as we find yeah. out, as we play the game, the MK core is as you predicted the proto molecule. At least that's yeah. what it's assumed. We don't know it's we don't know for sure, but it seems heavy handed. Because like uh Strickland gets name checked in it, Dresden gets name checked in it, uh Jules Pierre Mao is like is like initials are mentioned and that one like that's the guy if they mentioned his name everybody would know who it was because he's the famous one. strickland's like a fake name dresden would be kind of known maybe but like i don't know well i we didn't we listen to a recording from jp it was two jp like, it was like someone bitching about him like someone's complaining about him or, or giving him shit about something i remember i don't think it was from I, it was, no well no because if you looked at if you watched the credit they did a uh, a credit to the actor that oh, played Jules Pierre Mao, and so I, yeah. So, but so is that JP? Do you think that's Jules? Was that Jules Pierre, or was that someone else? Do you think it had to be Jules Pierre Mao because the actor's name was in the credit for the episode. Was it Franchise Child that played him? Yep. Oh wow! I didn't. Yeah, I didn't get that far into it. Wow. Okay. So yeah, I mean that confirms it then. So yeah, that this is where I'm kind of like I feel like so this is what kind of throws me off about it is that. They find out, like, but they never said it's an alien. That was the one thing. They never said it's like it's like alien tech. They said that it's like a bio weapon. It's it's like, and they they quote unquote found it. Um, yeah. And that and that that's kind of nice though because that they found it because that's what happened here on the station, is that this like tuberculosis thing just kind of happened. It wasn't like they brought it with them. It it evolved out. And so it might be that these guys, like you could speculate, drummer could speculate, oh, they found like some weird disease on an abandoned station. Okay, cool. Like, but now they're testing on belters. Um, yeah, I don't, um, and then you, the, the two guys, then there's like, there's like two people on the station with mm -hmm. you that you're trying to find that have the MK core. Um, uh, the, and the, the element is that like, uh, they're the ones that kind of ran off with it and we're going to try to sell it or try to like, they said it's too dangerous. And then well, like, the, yeah, the take I got was that they saw the path of like Dresden's experiment yeah. and were like, this Dude, is like, this is, not, we can't, be, I cannot be part of yeah. this anymore. And so Mike, I, I do wonder if not necessarily to sell it, but they were like trying to maybe hide it on the, the mining station. Cause yeah. they know it's like an abandoned, and I don't think they were very successful. Yeah, because well, the one guy, because well, and then they contacted the UN, and the UN sent the uh, Ursa, Ursa Ursa Navi, and then that got hit by these pirates, and it's un and that was because that was my original theory was that it wasn't really quote unquote pirates, and we might we don't still don't know, but it, it was like a stealth ship or like it was like a protogen front. And it, and because and we know that like we know the stealth ships are like nasty like I mean that was established in the books quite or in the show in the books that like six stealth ships could take on the Donager which is supposedly unkillable yeah like so like one of them ambushing another ship it could probably take it on if it, and that's kind of what seems like happened to the Earth Navi got ambushed right um, well my theory is that the Earth is Earth Bane. Uh, the name of the pirate. Oh, the, yeah, it's like something's Bane. Yeah, I can't remember what it is offhand. Yeah, so Captain Toussaint 
Uh, I think that they were hired by Jules Pierre yeah. now to retrieve it. I think there was like, or I don't, I don't know, like, but I think it didn't we see Salvatore like, oh uh, no, Aaron Wright, sorry, Aaron Wright. We saw That's his first name, yeah, Salvatore Aaron Wright. You got it. Yeah, <laughs> we found he did a an appearance with the episode two. Like he's, he, his name pops he's up. He's mentioned, past. yeah. Yeah, he and, writes a letter to the to the Urshanabi or the or one of the ships about something. Um and some sort of action. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, because I feel I the the gist I got from the show was that Oh Salvatore, I'm sorry. I thought I thought you said uh, not Salvatore. Um what's his first Aaron what's Aaron Rice's first name? That's with an S. That's why I was first confused, yeah. That, uh, Salvatore, that's it, Salvatore. Salvatore, yeah. That's yeah. very very close, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so Aaron Wright kind of had like this. Um, I, I always got the sense that Aaron Wright and Jules Caramel and the show have been working together for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And I think that they were constantly like butting heads and constantly disagreeing yeah. on how to handle the situation. And so I kind of wonder if Aaron Wright was the one who sent the Urshanabi and Jules Caramel sent, was the one that sent uh, the pirate ship to attack yeah. the United States. Because uh, Aaron Wright could have been like, you know, I could grab this thing myself instead of having to mess with Jules Pierre Mao. I'm done with him. Like, you know, he's, yeah. he's he's a dick, so screw him, yeah. So that that's a really interesting theory, too. Yeah, I can see that. But what happens with the guy, the, so the two guys that ran off from, from, from basically from Phoebe and got on the station, long story short, like, their supplies were running low, and, like, one of them just kind of lost it. Um, he had, like, low oxygen. He kind of loses it. Um, and you end up, he ended up killing the other one, and you, and you kill him. Um, in a cool little combat sequence, actually. But, uh, yeah, it was, you know, you kind of get this thing, you don't know what it is, but you're like, uh, there's the debate about should we give it to the belt? Should we dispose of it? What to do with it? Stuff like that's kind of interesting. And and as and I want to go um, with what, what uh, Fred here in the chat said from the time that guy, from the time that guy server said, um, haven't gotten to the, that part of the game yet, but I wish they didn't delve into the protomolecule stuff in it. That should be reserved for the show, for like the main storylines of the of the books and the show, and that's that's kind of where I'm at with it. Is that it feels like it cheapens the conspiracy, is what I feel like. Yeah, and I agree with you on that one. But it, it I mean, I've been like rewatching. I just uh, I rewatched the uh, like the last three seasons of the like so the last two seasons of the expanse just over the last couple of days. And it's really, I, what I find interesting is that, like, every time the protomolecule I, pops up in the show, Jomar is conveniently not around. And so, like, I'm pretty sure, like, you know, Fred kept it pretty under wraps and he had the protomolecule under his, in his right. quarters. And I'm pretty sure that she would have clocked him a lot sooner if she'd known he had his hands on that. If we're, like, kind of bridging the gap between the story. Yeah, so, well, the, but the thing about that, though, for me is that the scene where Miller, Holden, and Naomi tell Fred about what happened on Arrows for Real, drummer's in the room. Like, so when they oh. get... Yeah, she, she she prevents Miller from leaving. Like, she blockades Miller in the room. Okay, I, okay, that's right. And, and, like, Fred's like an alien. Like, it's a, it's a disease, it's a, it's a weapon, an alien. Drummer would have been immediately like, holy shit, that thing's still out there? Like, so that that's what threw me off a little bit. That's what threw me off a little bit. Uh, yeah. So I, I will that that's kind of like I mean now we're get we're getting into like nitpicky continuity shit here. I mean this is like super geek crap. Like you know this is what we do in comic book stores, guys. If you've never been, um, but, but uh, yeah that you know that that that's what's kind of throwing me off, and that's why like my angle is that if they'd only done the stuff like say the pods, I would have been very happy. Yeah, I would have been like that makes a lot of sense. They need this tech. These guys this cult developed this tech, so yeah, they're gonna go there and get this stuff. Um, and they have to be controlled. They need some sort of certain procedure or patented stuff. And I would have been cool with that. But yeah, you know, that was, um, that's what threw me, uh, threw me off about it a little bit. Um, do you, uh, what, what else here do you want to talk about with, with this episode? Cause there's still some, there's a lot more to talk about. Uh, some well, of the I know I, I actually, so my thing is if the, I was Ray and Maddox, the, the two people that we come across on the station. Those are the names. Yeah. Uh, I feel like they knew the station was there. Mm -hmm. And I do wonder, like, how much did um, Strickland know about this 
the story behind the 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 collective and what the Dresden know about the collective because I actually do think that I have a theory um, about all that. Oh my gosh, me too. My well, theory, I want to hear yours first now. <laughs> okay, I think that the um, they knew about what happened uh, in the collective about the kid and. This is still like what, like ten years before the events of the show. Three years. Well, the 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 station falls apart like a hundred years, one hundred and ten years before the show starts. It's yeah. been preserved for a long time, and then the events of this game are three years before the show starts. Okay, so I think just because of space travel, they kind of cut that out in the show. Um, I think that Strickland may have been the one to genetically modify the children he was experimenting on mm -hmm. on Ganymede while they were still in utero being gestated. Yeah. Well, he needed that because he needed that certain mutation that only happened on Ganymede. Yeah, but is it is it only happening on Ganymede because right. of just the circumstances and the environment and just random mutations? Right. Or, or did he... he... Was he the one that did like... Because they talk about CRISPR, right? Yeah. And CRISPR is about gene modification. Right. And I'm, I would imagine that there's some usage of CRISPR. Um, yeah, oh yeah. To help kind of like help the Belcher babies kind of oh, like sure. make it through. Absolutely. And so I'm pretty sure he sort of like clicked the switch that nobody was watching. Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, watching. I, I think that's actually a fair thing because at this point in the story, those children would have been like three to five years old maybe. They've been pretty young, um, you know, maybe a little bit younger at times. But yeah, he would have been he would have been monitoring them. He would have been their pediatrician by now, probably since birth, you know. And yeah, we don't know how long, like, I mean, how many years are when the when the episode three of the game comes out. We don't know how far, like, Strickland and Dresden are well, they, into, like, their experiment. We we know that the protomolecule, so the protomolecule was discovered eight years prior to the show's beginning. Mm -hmm. So they would have they would have only been a few years into this. Yeah. But their thing is that they, they do this super aggressive research that's why like the whole the tm the the, the transcranial uh, hyper mag uh, magnetic hyper stimulation is such a big thing because they need to accelerate everything and yeah. they're just like experimenting however they can and wherever they can um and that, that was one thing the game did pretty good is like when you do i will say is like when they do talk about the proto molecule they talk about the steps these guys tried like they tried microbiome bacterial cultures initially they tried some like um they tried one person by themselves then they tried like a group of people together they started figuring out you could decontaminate within a certain amount of time, but it was like a really brief time you could do it, um, mm -hmm. which was kind of interesting to me because I had never heard you could decontaminate. I, I thought like just one exposure to skin is, is a death sentence, basically. Well, I would assume if you got some on your finger, you'd just cut your finger off and pop some salt, but you know. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But they were saying you could like decontaminate like to some degree. Um, but yeah, it might, it might be a little extreme step, we'll say. Um, you know, just some sort of, you know, dismemberment or something like that. So yeah, there's, it was, it was interesting seeing all that. Uh, my theory on it is that they do mention Dresden being this kind of guy they knew about that was really into, um, uh, stuff. And like, they kind of knew about some weirdos back in like their grad school days they'd mentioned and then being into like this kind of like basically diseases, like, like, uh, disease, uh, science and stuff like that too. And how this was a study and there was like, it could be that like the reason why no one got help was that it was unauthorized, but also that they were using it as like a petri dish. Uh, this could have yeah. this could have been an early Dresden experiment. And the other reason too is that of why they would know about the station so much is that to understand and it's, it's something that gets overlooked a lot um, in the expanse is understanding where Mao gets his fortune from. Um, where, how Mal Kwiatkowski becomes so big. And it's not because like Mal's ancestors built this great company. What it was was that his, his ancestors were the lawyers that when Venus, when the colonization of Venus like went awry, like all these people are trying to do it and there's everyone's in legal disputes. His ancestors were the ones that were the lawyers and ran through the courts for decades and decades and decades. And then what happened is that when people couldn't pay, they were like, well, here's our company. And so they ended up with all these companies and put them under Mal Quick. And they just have tons and tons of crap. They have instant yeah. infrastructure. And so what I think is that this station was built out of old Mal Quick crap. That they, they bought it at auction and like yeah, put it together. I mean, and so he knows about it all. He's like, yeah, I knew who I sold it to. 
and he yeah. uses and he uses that as like a resource later on, or you know, as answers. That that's my that's just my wild ass theory. Um, I do, I do wonder too if like they maybe like Dresden was uh, maybe part of the what can the proto molecule do like experimentation phase. Mm -hmm. Maybe they actually try to use it to resurrect these dead people. There, and I feel like that's what we're gonna find out is that like they were even trying to see if it would be active on dead tissue. Um, like if it doesn't just kill, but it can work on, on active tissue too. So we'll, we'll see how that works. Um, the, the, the protocol, the proto molecules primary need is that it needs to have self replicating cells. And so I think mm -hmm. dead tissue wouldn't work for it. It would just, it would like, it's just, it, it wouldn't be able to interact with it. It wouldn't, it wouldn't do anything for it. Um, yeah. Until much later until it can, um, can actually figure it out. And that's, a, that's its biggest problem is it needs computational power through biomass. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, it just kind of sits there and does nothing. Um, yeah. So it's 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 kind of and that's what that's what's so fascinating about it too. Um, but yeah, this um, the all right. So let's talk about like the back end of the episode and like the end of it, uh, the actual story. Because we're because we're getting like the weeds here of the lore. <laughs> but what about like drummer's position in this? And I think we get a lot of kind of stuff that helps us understand drummer's character, especially on the show in comparison to stuff like. Uh, what she says to Michio uh, in the later seasons with the, the polyamorous like, family and kind of how they break up and how she manages that. She said that I loved you because you were, I didn't love you because you were fighters. I loved you because you were building and I wanted to build something. And we, we got that with Maya earlier. So we kind of have a call back, kind of a call forward with that with Maya situation. But then we have, um, we very much get the instance where the belters on the ship just get done with it all. Um, and so, our, so basically on the ship, there's two belters of twins, uh, Rayan and Arlen. And Arlen's kind of like the more dominant twin. He's kind of a bully, we'll say. And you find out that he's a drug addict. He's addicted to the pixie dust. He's been hiding it for a while. But his brother lets him kind of bully on him. And his brother is also the one whose leg you possibly took off. But you kind of helped out his brother here and there, um, showed him some mercy. But long story short, they find, like, Arlen finds out that you have this thing you're looking at selling it, maybe giving it to someone. They actually they actually talk about giving it to Dawes. That's actually posited yeah. at one point, which is fascinating. Um, but the uh, what ends up happening is like Arlen pulls a gun on on uh, drummer Maya saying, "Give me the thing. I'm gonna go sell it." And is like, "I gotta kill drummer." Yeah, I, I tried to like uh, explain to him why we don't want to sell it to the Belters, and apparently that fell on deaf ears. Yeah, that guy's that guy that guy is a nut. He's just like he's like you know fuck it, I want my money, I don't care, whatever. And he's like it'll it'll impact. He's like he's like saying it'll empower us. It'll, it'll be a bargaining chip. So he's kind of doing the Fred Johnson thing, but mm -hmm. he doesn't know how to use a bargaining chip. This guy this guy is like and what what sucked about that for me was that like. I started feeling bad for Arlen last episode and yeah. because I'm like, oh, the guy's a drug addict. He helped his brother through a really traumatic experience of getting off with a Vespa or Vespa. I can't remember which one it was. It was Vespa or Vespa, but like got, they got off the station. He helped rescue his brother. He did a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, all right, I get why this guy's got trauma. I get why he acts the way he does. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, all right, like the drug addict is going to try to like shake you down with a gun. I'm like, come on, man. I, like, you know, I was mad because I like went and like, uh, got the 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 drug for him to help with his yeah the addiction the, yeah the addiction and I'm like I was like oh I'm gonna find this for him and maybe like that'll like make him chummier with drummer yeah exactly and I'm like and I'm like apparently that apparently didn't not work. and then you then you get into this whole thing where like you can basically choose like like uh, his brother comes over to like escort you to the airlock basically and Rayan like kind of says you're like hey trust me and Which then I did. And you can trust him, and this is the guy you've helped out. You might have taken his leg off for that too, but you've, you, you know, he's he's better than his brother in that regard. Mm -hmm. And or you can like try to fight the guy on the spot. And I was like, I'll trust this dude. I, you know, I've been building up to him. He seems like a good dude. He doesn't want to do this kind of shit. He doesn't like, you know, Rayan doesn't seem like the kind who's like trying to like, you know, bully his way and pulling guns. It's definitely not his idea. Um, and so you kind of trust him, and then like you, you get taken to the airlock. This is what happened in our playthrough, at least. It sounds like. You get taken the airlock, and he's kind of like, you know, I don't want to, you know, you don't have to do this. He's like, I got to do it kind of thing for my brother. He, like, throws you in the airlock, but he gives you a helmet. 
and he's like, you know, we'll see. And then you hear a gunshot, and then cut, then you have Arlen coming in with like Maya, who's shot, and he throws her in the airlock too. And then like your fight with Maya about who should have the helmet, and she puts the helmet on you, and like basically, spoiler, she dies as you get thrown yeah. out to the station. And it's kind of like, I don't know, man. I, I that bothered me a lot. Um, and I and I'm not sure how exactly you save Maya here. I'll say. Um, I will say this. I I if you've read, I've read through the uh, the achievements for the game, which do spoil some end game stuff. Okay. And uh, I'm not. I don't want to go into it, but like I knew you could save Maya from the achievements. Yeah. And I was like, oh, how do you know what the fuck is going on here? What the fuck is going on here? And I made some decisions based on what I kind of knew about the achievements. What I what I do think though is here's my current theory is that if um uh the uh oh you're saying no hidden achievements uh there are hidden achievements but there are like spoilers to the achievements um if you're curious why I was looking at the achievements because the achievements are kind of quasi broken on Epic Games and I was trying to figure out why they weren't triggering so I went through the achievements to see which ones I should have and I don't so uh it was kind of I was trying to debug the game a little bit. There. Um, if you're curious, because I like I only have two achievements for the game right now. And I've been playing it nonstop. But I should have way more than that. Um, but the um, uh, my thought is that I know that like some of the crew will die somehow. Like there's like ways for them to die here and there. And my thought mm -hmm. is that if you if you if you if you save if you didn't get the vault like in the first episode where you where you didn't where you choose to save the leg or save the vault and I we I think we both chose to choose to save the vault which is like what drummer would do hashtag like, cut the leg cut the hashtag leg off. the leg has to go the leg's gotta go buddy uh I feel like that's gonna cost someone else their life like that's you chose you chose to to by saving the leg you would choose that someone else to die later on because you don't have as many resources yeah. and it feels like the game's gonna get more and more desperate about resources um, I wonder if the person that was going to die would have been Khan. I, I, from my understanding, and what I've read, and even what they said in interviews, is that the only like that was a big thing was that uh, there's uh, was it uh, there's what six people on the ship initially, right? Total there's 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 drummer, the twins, Khan, Maya, oh seven, there's seven of them. Yeah, then right. then the doctor and uh, the Cox. captain. Yeah, so seven, right? And the mm -hmm. idea was that like the I remember when 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 Frost introduced the game during the experience, he said he's like, it's a story about seven people on a ship. One of them you know is gonna live for sure. The rest the rest fates up in your hands. Mm -hmm. And he's all like, one of them for sure in the first episode, fate is up in your hands. And that was kind of how he was trying to introduce the Cox kind of like, you know, circumstance at the end of the episode one. And mm -hmm. so that was kind of an interesting element because drummer's life, first you know, survives. That's it. That's the only thing you know going into it. So, I, and they, and from my understanding, they built the game in a story where anybody can die, except uh, for drummer. Except for drummer. Except for drummer. Yeah. Drummer's got plotted. That that was funny because when I ran when I ran um I ran a charity stream, Adapt's Fate, uh, a while back, and uh, everyone was returning players. So there it was a prequel we did, mm -hmm. um, like taking place a few years before the events of the show. And I was like, yeah, I really had one person playing a new character. And I was like, yeah, everybody's got plot armor except you. So have fun. <laughs> like, Sorry, you know. my cat is like okay. jumping on my lap. Cats, cats are welcome on my stream anytime. We've, we've had we have plenty of episodes where Donna's cat rocket rockets across the screen. <laughs> <laughs> like this guy just shoots across the screen. You're kind of like, all right. Oh my God. You, have to kind of just, okay. you just kind of have to roll with it. So it's all good. Um, but I thought this episode was one of the most... Um, it was very railroady. Like there wasn't a lot of like, like sandbox exploration. Like you weren't floating around ships. You're floating around the station, and the station's very much laid out. It got a very finite amount of exploration possibility. And it, and it did make sense for the plot because they're like, we have to reactivate each layer of this mining station, which makes sense because you have to go deeper and deeper in the station, so you have to go in order, and that was fine. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I, I kind of dug. Um, oh, the, one thing in the game I dug that was a cool little like uh, detail was when you go down to the mining shafts and you see the uh, the carts, right? They're all on magnetic rails. I thought that was super cool. Yeah. I was like, oh, cool, good, good move, guys. They're actually on magnetic rails, not on gravity. That yeah, that wouldn't work. So I, I was digging all that. But it's a creepy pasta episode. I mean, it's like it's creepy. It, it's got some good creep. The first body you encounter, the guy in the suit, that was great. 
I was like, uh, I, I, I would have been like screaming my head off. Like if I, if I were present in that and saw that, oh, yeah. I would have screamed and like turned around and booked it. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that actually. Um, that was a, that was a good shot. Um, there was some, when I was playing through the lore playthrough, uh, one of my, one of the friends in the RPG community was like, he was looking at the screens and he was like, why are they doing these like old school, like LCD screens versus like the kind of holographic screens? And I was like, oh, well, this takes, this, this station's over 120, 130 years old. It's, it's, it's older tech. And also it seemed like cheaper tech that they bought on the cheap, which is why I think they bought it. I'm going to guess they, they bought it. Like a surplus sale. Like yeah, a sale they, they bought it at the, the, the Mal Quick, you know, uh, fire sale, you know, or whatever. <laughs> Get rid of all the old stuff. Um, but I like that they kind of, sh they did a really good job in this episode of showing retro tech um, in the expanse. Yeah. And that's one of the things that we, like, you have to explain, I, people need to understand what the Rasta Nante is. The Rasta Nante is like the cutting, bleeding edge ship of the time. It has organic, like, regrowable screens and computers and shit. I mean, it's like super high end. And it's a warship versus like most people's stuff is like it sucks it's not Tycho station it's not Sirius station it sucks like it's just whatever they can find and patch together that's why i like the scenes with um maneo and his uncle because you have like you know uh i always like that ship because it's just like it's like what the rock hopper is like, we, we did that we did a rock hopper once on my show as the, we were playing the rpg and mm -hmm. one of the characters was like where's the bathroom and the the pilot of the ship's like uh you see that you see that thing strapped to the wall behind me that's it yeah <laughs> like get on it he's like oh he's like you know he's like where's the airlock he's like you're in it <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> he's like oh okay I, it's that kind of ship i know i know what we're talking about you know it, so i think that was one thing i liked about this episode seeing the retro tech I, I uh drummer comments like i haven't seen i i didn't even know they had helmets like this still you know <laughs> like this is super i'm rare. willing to bet those are the helmets that would like they're probably like the burn helmets yeah burn, the burn helmet yeah, the ones that like the the hardcore OPA guys like Dawes War, yeah. Yeah. I, I, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm really curious where it's gonna go. Uh any so let, let's go ahead and give our predictions for episodes four and five. Um you know, there's no use in predicting who's gonna die because it seems like anybody can die now. So uh <laughs> who are we choose? Well, I my is dead in my playthrough, and I'm gonna live with it. I think Yeah, it I was like I actually started queuing up when that happened yeah. because uh the 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 wailing that like drummer like did when maya died was just like that was like a sucker punch and that was gut-wrenching that was very gut-wrenching and i was just like all of a sudden like so many things in the show made sense to me yeah. like that's i think that's why uh drummer like loves naomi because i feel like there's a lot of similarities between maya oh yeah and Naomi. She's an engineer. That, I mean, that's the big thing. She's younger. She's an engineer. Um, she's a she's, builder. She she's wants a builder. Build she's hopeful. Naomi comes yeah. off as pretty hopeful. And I just, um, she I likes, think she, she likes playing sports in zero G. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I think that she, she's able to tease drummer because I, the only time we really see drummers like sense of humor come out is when she's with Naomi or when she's with Maya. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, when she's uh, in the, the X-ray short of like when Michio was like, I went looking through her phone and she still had all these videos and stuff from uh, Naomi and uh, Drummer ended up like crying as she's deleting them. And I feel like that was like her way of finally letting go, not only of Naomi, but of Maya as well. Maybe, yeah, I can see that for sure. I, and there's also, and I also could see I also see this whole thing with like the the Artemis being this kind of storyline of like um like a real like I feel like it's gonna ultimately like I feel like drummer's ultimately gonna fail in this mission like it's gonna fall apart by the end of it like not, she's gonna have nothing yeah. to show for it or I, or she's gonna she's gonna do something but she can't take credit for it does that make sense yeah like like kind of like the end of like Dark Knight where like you know Batman has to be the villain or you know but made the right choice for everybody. My prediction is that like moving forward, Drummer doesn't actually ever find out it's the photo molecule yeah. she has. I she knows it's something dangerous. She knows it's something that a lot of people want to get their hands on. But I don't think she's ever gonna think it's I don't think she's ever gonna connect the dots I, because she would have ripped Fred's head off and like right. she would have had a different reaction 
Um, when Holden, we, yeah, and, and, Mil- Miller. and Holden, Miller, and Naomi all tell them, hey, here's like footage of people dying on this alien thing on, on a station. My thought is that I think what she's going to do, here's my here's my wild ass guess. And actually, I think it's not that wild, but it, it's not that it's actually a pretty good guess. I think it's a good hypothesis. I think she's going to like gather all the information about the Phoebe station stuff, all that. Mm-hmm. And she's going to approach Dawes and be like, take the bounty off my head and I'll give you all this data about this thing. And then Dawes uses that to intercept with Julie Mao. Oh, that's a good point because uh the scientist is a the paolo the cortisar yes uh like i mean there's a reason like if we remember from the show dawes kidnapped him yeah right dawes goes at him specifically yeah well he's the only one but yeah he targets him and so it's like i think dawes it's plausible that dawes has like information from the events that were like waiting to unfold from the game and like but, reacted and, I, and I, think, I think he also art i think he's the one all, i also i'm pretty sure like it's never really confirmed or not but it's i'm pretty sure he's the one that sets up the scopuli circumstances to get the scopuli to go intercept it and he has Jim yeah. mao so he's got all these resources he stacks the deck and he, i don't i don't i think as, as smart as anderson dawes is and as much of a player as he is i don't think he knew exactly who he was playing against yeah, I agree. And 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 like you know, these guys got a fleet of stealth ships and they're ready to fuck you up, like no problem. And they do. And so, mm-hmm. um, and then when when he finds Cortazar, he knows about this stuff to some degree. He doesn't know exactly what, but he knows it's about. And Cortazar is part of the deal. He knows Dresden's name or whatever it is, but he also doesn't know that Fred Johnson has the proto molecule himself. And and doesn't go after the real the real the real prize. He only goes after like what he thinks is the prize. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and because and he, he's he's because Dawes comes off in the show when he when he kidnaps Corridor, he comes off very proud of himself, very proud mm-hmm. of himself. And and you know Fred's like you know well that fucking sucks, but at least he doesn't have like the real key of the whole circumstance. You know, um, the really dangerous thing. I mean, Corridor a problem, but he's you know and he gets basically like human trafficked around. <laughs> like I hate every, that's what happens to Paul Corridor. He gets human trafficked into Laconia like sooner or later. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's it's um, I so that's my thought is that that's what I think is gonna happen. I think I think she's gonna use because like when she does meet up with Dawes, Dawes doesn't have a bounty on her head. He's not going after her. And no, it's not, he's like coming up behind her oh, like when they were at the bar. No hard feelings. Like, and like she's all like giving him like the cheeky little side eyes, right? Eye right. Stuff, like you know those flirting like yeah uh, things. And. So and that was, was that, you know, put that bounty. Hey, baby, that putting that bounty on your head was a big mistake. My bad. I'm sorry. I feel bad about that. You know. <laughs> yeah, they they made up. They made um, up. They kissed and made up at some point. Yeah, and so I and, and so that's what I think is that she leverages her knowledge here and transfers all the data, and she wants nothing to do with it to Dawes, just the information, just to get him off off her back, and then that puts into motion how Dawes then like. Julie, Julie Mao ends up going off in her, on her own because, you know, her daddy issues or whatever it is. But he leverages, he gets all those resources together and, and Drummer's information from the station is part of that. So that yeah. That's my thought is that I bet you, okay, here's what, here's my, here's my, my more, my more precise prediction. And this is where I'm going to be wrong, I'm sure. But so at the end of the episode, she's stuck on the station. Yeah. You know, we know there's a communication array on the station that's pretty powerful and the power is working. She's going to yeah. contact Dawes and be like, I got the deal of the century for you, my friend. Should you decide to take this bounty off my head and let me get a ship to go hunt down these motherfuckers, mm-hmm. right? And I'll go hunt them down. I'll do all that. And you get the story of the century. You get the story of the century. And all you got to do is take the bounty off my head and give me a little bit of a ship to get out here and go after these dudes. Yeah, and so and then I, I and then my next prediction is that this is where I'm gonna, this is where I'm getting rid of the rails and I'm 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 free floating here, guys. She doesn't trust Dawes enough to go back to series, but she doesn't have the bounty on her head, so she talks to Fred Johnson, and that's how she gets the job on Tycho. Yeah, there has to be some there. I because I always did wonder like how did she go from Dawes yeah. to Johnson? Well, I mean, I and I, I I oh Virgil might be like you know we talked. Like Virgil, like he's ex-US Marine. He's a UN Marine. 
Yeah, and so like maybe he knew Fred, and Virgil was like, "I got somebody who I think you're gonna like." Yeah. Um, he's like me, uh, and it's like if you told me that Virgil was part of the Marine deployment on Anderson Station, I would buy into that. I I'm it, he alludes to something. Yeah, like, he, he about, did something like, bad. We, yeah, he did something, or he witnessed something bad that he was not comfortable with. Yeah, and now he wants and, to save lives. Yeah. And I want to save life. And so, like, it's like, he feels like uh, the Anderson Station situation, that's, that's a sin to atone for. Yeah. And we see how Fred, uh, like, atones for it. Um, and then, like, maybe there's just, like, it's all, I, I do think there's some sort of, like, connection with that. With, like, uh, and Drummer seems to... You know, she, the dialogue options we have with, with Maya is sort of like, she's like, should I trust you? But then, like, they, she, and Virgil even, they sincerely, like, feel remorse for whatever part they may have uh, taken um, up against the Belters. And I don't know, I don't think Drummer necessarily quick to forgive, but I do think that she's willing to give people chances if she yeah. feels that they are sincere enough. Yeah. Yeah, and she has no personal vendetta against uh, Johnson. And the other thing about Fred is also like, all right, like she knows that Fred and, and, and Dawes kind of have this kind of weird rivalry friendship thing going on or whatever it is. Frenemies. The frenemies, yeah, they're, they're, they're frenemies. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, exactly. And, but she knows that like, that like Dawes won't take a stab at Fred directly. Like she knows that yeah. he, he, he should be safe there. And, and she'll be, you know, she, she, the the idea of having a belter as your chief security of an Earth corporation is not a bad idea, um, either. So like you know that kind of relationship and such. So I, I think there's I I I could see this all tying together nicely. I really could. Um, I do, uh, I do, uh, and we're we're running out of time tonight. But I do want to say that hey, uh, Telltale, if you're watching guys and you're looking for some people to write another one of these, uh, we're available. Um, yeah. we, uh, we could, we got, we can, we can unpack some stuff and get in some real conspiratorial stuff. I'd have a I, lot got of fun. A, I got an A plus in creative writing in high there school. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I, um, I'm, I'm really intrigued by this cause I, I've had a, there's actually been a lot of questions. Um, one of my most fascinating questions, we did this when we did our charity stream back in February, Adapt as Fate, where I had my friend B. Dave Walters actually play Fred Johnson in the episode. Um, and, uh, the... The premise of that was like, how did Fred Johnson become the head of Tycho Station? Because the entire plot line of the Expanse falls apart if Fred Johnson is not in charge of Tycho Station. That's a very valid call. He, out. he is. He is like no. I mean, I'm not trying to say he's not, but like somehow that was engineered, and that's why that was the premise of our show was that he won the contract. I think I believe that he knew that winning the contract for the Navu was the way that he would he would ensure his success going forward. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, but that was part of my episode, it was, a, it was kind of a um, uh, Mission Impossible type thing where Fred Johnson's gonna rig that they get the contract from the Mormons um, and mm -hmm. beat out the other competitors. Um, and there was other competitors. We actually, I went through and actually came up with other ideas of how, how, how to get, basically, how do you get Mormons from Earth to another star? Uh, it's the, it's I the, am so love. And there's a, there's a lot of ways, as it turns out, um, yeah. you know, from here to there. And uh, why did Tycho win? Why, why were they the winners? Why not Mal Quick? Um, why not? Uh, and then in the RPG, we have Sebastian Pope's thing. And, and Sebastian Pope was the he was the one that lost the contract. He was supposed to be the winner, and he lost it. He was just gonna mm -hmm. he was just gonna make Mormon popsicles and send them out there. Um, <laughs> you know, freeze them all and just send them out. Good luck. But um, but yeah, it's fascinating. Uh, it's a fascinating kind of premise, and a lot of it hinges on Fred Johnson being at that place at that time, watching the Doniger fight, being aware of James Holden and, and hooking them up, and all mm -hmm. of it kind of spins out of that. Um, yeah, ask yourself real quick, how, how far would James Holden have got without Fred Johnson? He would Not been, very. He would have been trying to fight, he would have been in the night trying to fight stealth ships. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and you're laughing because it's true. I know. <laughs> and then it's like, and, uh, honestly, it's, it's I, like, the show would have been like 25 
the entire like six seasons would have yeah. like ended in the first 25 minutes of the yeah and it, so. i actually think it would have ended with with uh naomi telling amos to space them and and alex being just turning his head and letting him do it and shed would have shed would have lived shed would have lived guys yeah um <laughs> But um, that's the one consolation prize. We got more shed. Um, yeah. I, and, and Telltale, please shed Garvey episodes. Please do shed Garvey bonus episodes. We need shed Garvey story. How do you fail in your way up? Uh, <laughs> is what we really need. Amber, I had so much fun talking to you tonight. This was a great episode. We we really we really took it a pass. I think I feel like we we offered a really good criticism, positive negative criticisms of the game tonight. I feel like we we, we got a lot out of it. Yeah, and I I you know I just again want to say you know. Our criticisms are not because we hate love. The game. We love it. Like we love it. maybe a little too much on my end. Um, and because I do appreciate the like, what's this? What's this? Like mm-hmm. I love the idea of like doing research and going yeah. down these deep dives and like expanding my knowledge on like just about things in general. And so the game's like been a really good learning experience for me. I completely I really agree. Appreciate I think the game's been a good. I think it's. I think it's made me realize. I one thing it's made me do is is understand how tight the plot line of especially Leviathan wakes the in the first part of the show are, um, mm-hmm. how tight the conspiracy really was, and that's kind of what makes me worried. That's the one thing is like I, I kind of hold sacred about especially the first book, is mm-hmm. how tight and how terrifyingly complicated the conspiracy really was, yeah. um, and how well executed it was. Mm-hmm. And that's what I get kind of, that's the one thing I actually hold most sacred about the expanse is that conspiracy is amazing and how you're, you're given all these little pieces, but you know, you don't really put them together until the, until it's too late. And that's the beauty of it. Uh, um, yeah. it's too late. And so I'm really looking forward to where this goes. And I think there could be a lot of fun with this. Um, I, I will say if Khan dies, I riot. That's, I will riot like series station. Uh, because Con, okay. Con, like I, my, look, man, I'm, I, I like Maya. I get Maya. I, I, it's you know what it is. I like I like Drummer's emotional connection to Maya more than I like Maya, and that sounds really bad. Oh, she I, I, I will say she's she's not very dimensional. No, I, I feel like okay. Now we're getting some good criticism. Okay, the show will not end quite yet. I will say about <laughs> Maya. Maya's supposed to be a Martian Marine, and really, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, why was she in the Martian Marines? Like, if she kind of didn't buy into the bullshit, when did she stop buying into the Martian dream? I have a lot of kind of questions about Maya's kind of char- as a character. Um, but I, I, yeah, I'm kind of like, I'm okay with Maya's fate one way or the other here. Um, but Khan is the one, when I found out that Khan owns the ship, and I found out Khan's past about her husband, I was like, fuck yeah, dude, Khan's my girl. Like, I love Khan. And well, my the thing I noticed in episode three, instead of calling her Captain, like instead of Khan calling Drummer Captain Drummer, she calls her Cat. Yeah. So that leads like we enter into the nickname territory, yeah. which adds another layer of respect yeah. and another like level of acceptance. And hey, I'm starting to like Drummer. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> and my once again like my my top Khan's my top my S tier, my favorite of the crew. My second favorite is Virgil. I like Virgil a lot. Virgil's yeah. legit. Like I'm like, if, if you kill Virgil, I'm like, why would you kill Virgil? Like, you're fucking, you're you're a dirtbag if you kill if you, if you kill Virgil. Like why would you do that? He's like, all the good food on the ship because he's the cook. Yeah, he, he's the cook and the medic. Like you know, he's he's making he's keeping everyone alive. You know, <laughs> 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 yeah, he's keeping everyone alive and wanting to stay alive. You know, and, but Arlen and Rayan, man, I was like when I first encountered them on the ship, I was like, this guy Arlen's gonna be a dick. Like he's gonna give me a jackass. And the Bone Brother seems like he's kind of clumsy, but he's, he seems like his heart's good. But he's kind of, you know, he's kind of screwing around too much. And my my opinion of them is they're they're both like they they kind of represent like the duality of Belters. Like the the like the, they both have the good part. They both have good parts. They both have bad parts of Belters in general, kind of their culture. And um, and that was was kind of interesting about them too. So I I, I did dig that. But I'm yeah, I, I'm looking forward to episode four. I'll be playing, I'll be playing it uh, Thursday live on stream. I'll, I'll usually play it the night before, and then I'll play it uh, live on stream to kind of get my lore commentary, take notes and everything um, and everything. But, hey, guys, I want to tell everyone, thanks for hanging out with you guys. Thanks for the, those that came from time. That guy's Discord. You guys are awesome. Uh, much love to that community. Uh, yeah. I knew that I had to have someone that, like, loves the show and loves the, the franchise as much as I do, and Amber has definitely been a, a winner uh, in that mm-hmm. regard, and not to mention has a badass drummer cosplay and 
Uh, I'm glad you gave some. T I, I like how you got on Twitter and gave some tips to Telltale on how to do uh, a drummer cosplay. <laughs> that was super awesome. How, yeah. to do, how you do your tattoos um, and everything. But everyone, uh, thank you so much for hanging out. And uh, pl oh, please check out the Abraxas Precipice social medias too. Um, we're doing a giveaway. Uh, the new a new Expanse book just dropped today from them, which is um, it's, they're, they're doing a series of books called Trades of the Expanse, which is kind of about like, different jobs in that universe. And this is about scouts. This is about people that go to planets first. Um, or go to systems first and try to find new stuff and it's, it's actually a pretty cool little book um and we're really digging it but uh please check out our social medias there uh and you can go and find out how to enter to win a free copy of that on we're giving away a copy on instagram twitter and blue sky so all the platforms we're on uh and we're hoping to give those away next week and everything amber always a pleasure absolute pleasure always a pleasure to come back thanks right. for having me on again i can't wait to, i can't wait to talk about more about this because i we got we're gonna have we had guys we have so many words we have all the best words uh, we're gonna but, have like this. We're gonna have like a at the end of this. I think both you and I are gonna end up like writing a novella like, in two parts of like all of our thoughts and feelings well, on this. I, I feel like I feel like we're gonna have a little shared trauma, uh, a little trauma bonding. I think I, that's what I feel like we're doing here is a trauma bonding. Um, yeah. You know, and and I and that's one cool thing about Telltale Games. They actually, that's actually a big part of the community is kind of people talk about decisions and the different emotional things they pull on. And this this episode did some great emotional pulls, but it also I won't. Care, I think this was the most beautiful episode um in terms of interiors and such and some really creepy creepy stuff did a really good job with the horror reminded me a lot of dead space and a lot of fronts and everything but all right guys i'm back on uh i'll be back uh this week i'll be back tomorrow with my stream about my, my class and i'll be back playing the expanse game next week too and amber will be back in two weeks uh we got some guests actually coming to help to talk with us i can't mention who they are quite yet but I don't even know. Just you don't even know. know. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to know. Surprise me. Surprise you me. You want me to surprise you? Yeah. Okay. I will say this. They are uh, they are jealous and envious of the quality of your drummer cosplay. Oh, okay. So this is this is a, this is a fan of yours in, oh. in some regard. They they but they're also a fan of the game and they're a fan of all the expanse stuff. But they're they're definitely a fan of, of what you what you pull off with uh, with your uh, outfits and stuff like that. It's, very was someone who was like uh when i pointed they were asked i pointed them to your tweet about how to, how you do your tattoos uh with the printer and uh she was very much like oh my god it's so much easier than what i've been doing <laughs> like, <laughs> so they appreciated that all right guys we'll be back uh, i'll be back we'll be back in two weeks i'll be back uh throughout the week guys thank you so much for hanging out with us and uh, we look forward to episode four later thanks for hanging out with us guys good night